Hello and welcome to the Modern Mainframe Videocast where we talk about transforming your mainframe applications with DevOps. And I'm joined by my friend Tony Anter who's BMC's DevOps Evangelist. So the next questions I want to ask you are all around effective testing for mainframe applications. When we talk about automated testing, what is different when we're including that with the mainframe? I mean, really, Eric, nothing. It's a, again, it's just a platform. The mainframe is just another platform. Mm -hmm. It's just another box in your data center. Sure. So when you're talking about automated testing, your frameworks might be a little bit different and maybe some of your technology is mm -hmm. a little bit different, but the processes and the, 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 the capability of it is the same. You're talking about creating testing that you can run in, in an automated batch that will stress your system, that will test the functionality of the right. system, that will test the, the changes and capabilities in your system. And plugging that into your pipeline or plugging that into your automation, it's no different than what the distributed guys are doing. Right. On the main, so so we, need to, we need to be platform agnostic when we talk about it. So when you're testing mainframe applications, how can you know that it is effective? And really, how, how can you know when you're done testing? So how can you know when it's effective? You need to be able to look at the changes, right? Whenever you're testing anything, mainframe or not, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you're stressing those changes that you're just now checking in. If you're going to right. shift that left, you want to make sure that you're looking at the changed code and executing those tests against that changed code. And, you know, there's a lot of tools out there to do that. Code coverage tools, things that will basically isolate and give you your code coverage metrics that will tell you exactly right. what you, you know, exactly what you changed and how much of that change did you actually test. And if you're going to look at that, you need to see it. As far as when, how do you know when you're done? It's those same metrics. How do you know when you're done testing or you've effectively tested? And it's the same thing. You have to look at those code coverage metrics in order yeah. to be able to see how much of my changed code have I executed to make sure that yeah. I'm pushing high quality down the line. Right, and so when you're thinking of mainframe applications, is automation in testing, is it optional? And you know, what are the risks involved if you're doing manual testing? I mean, if you're doing manual testing, the risks involved are human error. Sure. The risks involved are just running through the same old, same old. Yeah. You don't know you're effectively testing what, what you really need to be testing. And I mean, that, that's just a couple. If you're not automating your testing, you're not getting the most benefit out of DevOps. The single biggest benefit that you get in any DevOps mm -hmm. automation pipeline is your testing. If you yeah. have the fastest deploy and the fastest build and the fastest scan in the world, that, that's great. But if it's taking you eight weeks to test your capabilities, yeah. if you have to have seven people go in with spreadsheets and run 10 million line, you know, 10 million records against your system in order to hit the right uh, test data conditions, then what good was all that, all mm -hmm. that other stuff? The single biggest benefit you will get, and I believe, look at any analyst reports, look at any findings on this, any studies you want to pull up, the single biggest benefits you get are going to yeah. come from automating your testing. And the single biggest cost to any project is typically the yeah. test. Now for years we've heard about shift left testing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why is this so critical when we're looking at mainframe application? I think, again, I think it's critical for any application. Sure. But when you shift it left, now you're putting the burden of testing on the engineers that are writing the code. Yes. You're putting that testing, you're making it part of your development cycle so that you can speed that up. And then when you, when you check that code into your source code, when you check that code back into your SCM and it starts going down your pipeline, you know that's good quality. You know that that code has passed a set of a hopefully rigorous yes. set of tests. And so you know that this is at least a minimum standard of quality that I'm going to be looking at. Yeah. Now, just recently, you authored an ebook that was all about effective testing yeah. for the mainframe. The 10 steps to, main, to effective mainframe testing, myself and Mark Shettenhouse. Yes, excellent, excellent ebook. I've read it myself. So, uh, what I don't want to take the audience through all 10 steps, but give us some of the highlights that uh, the audience should consider. So I think as you go through the ebook, this is a set of steps and the steps build on each other from step one to step 10. They're really meant for start at step one and not everybody will have to be at step one, but you start where you're at, but then you're building iteratively through each step. And the, the highlights that I could give you is, I think the biggest one, let's just start with step one, which is, you know, uh, understand where you're at and where you're going. 
right? Understand your current state and your future state. Yes. If you don't know where you want to be and what needs to be done, then how are you going to create a pathway to get there? You don't. So you have to you have to begin with that. And then as you go through each step, not everything is about just writing automated test scripts. A lot of it is about test data. It's about improving your development yes. environment and understanding how to do that. It's about um, a different kinds of testing, not just unit testing, but functional testing, regression testing, yes. stress and performance testing. How do you make, how do you build those into your process? So I think the 10 steps is a really good journey. If you're looking at how to do this, the 10 steps to, you know, effective testing on the effective automated testing on the mainframe is a great place to start. Great. Tell me just a little bit about code coverage. Why is that so important for mainframe applications? You need to understand how and what is being tested. When you go through a test mm -hmm. run, you need to see, am I testing 10% of my code? Am I testing 90% yes. of my code? And am I testing the right parts of my code? Mm -hmm. Do you necessarily need to test uh, an application or, or a part of your code that's been, you know, hasn't changed in 30 years? You probably should have some kind of test to make sure. sure everything's good, but does that need to be tested every time, every way? No. What you need to do is make sure that you're testing those changes. You're testing yes. that code that is constantly being changed and those business, those business rules being added to it. You need to make sure that that's tested each and every time. So using those code coverage metrics are exactly the way to make sure that you're hitting what you right. need, where you need, how you need. Mm -hmm. Well, Tony, I want to thank you very much for Absolutely. sharing your insights on effective mainframe testing. And thank you for joining us for the Modern Mainframe.